Hey guys, it's Melvin78. Today I'm bringing you episode 15 of Transfer Rumours slash Roundup. So let's kick it straight off. We've got a confirmed transfer from Manchester City, Zinchenko. The Ukrainian midfielder, I think he's 19 or 20, has moved. And um, yeah, this is probably one that's going to be there for backup or he'll be one for the future. He may be sent back out on loan. Um, I'm not sure he'll get too many games, especially as a starter at Manchester City this season. But it's one for the future and they've wrapped up the signing. A few other clubs were interested. I'm not entirely sure who. I can't remember. I probably should have checked. But because it was confirmed, I didn't see too much point to it. But Manchester City have confirmed that signing. So he becomes Pep Guardiola's third. Is it? Is it second or third? I know they've signed um, Gundogan. Pretty sure they signed someone else's. But off oh, the top of my head, I can't remember. But anyway, yeah. Uh, it becomes, I think, Pep Guardiola's third signing of the season. Next, we've got a confirmed bid by BBC Sport. Well, not by BBC Sport. The report was by BBC Sport. But um, 16.6 million for Musa. That has been submitted by Leicester City, making it a record bid that's been accepted. Of course, they bid 25 million for Troy Deeney, but that got rejected. And now he's signed a five-year deal at Watford. But yeah. Musa, they've been linked with him for about a year, I think, and it uh, seems as though they're finally going to get his man. He'll travel in for a medical, he'll be unveiled, and uh, yeah, we'll get to see what he can bring for the Premier League. Don't know too much about him. I know he's good on FIFA, but uh, so are players like Dumbia, etc. I'm not comparing him to Dumbia. I'm just saying, yeah, we'll have to wait and see. Like, uh, I don't know too much about him, but he's a striker, and uh, yeah, Leicester now are increasing their options, I suppose. Next, we've got a player that uh, also has been confirmed, Denis Suarez, moving to Barcelona. So they now have two Suarezes. Uh, they've confirmed that he is going to move, uh, complete his medical tomorrow, and then he's going to uh, be officially unveiled on Wednesday. So, yeah, Barca are getting the deals in pretty early. They've signed him Titi, they've signed De Denis Suarez. They're getting a lot of depth. Of course, they've got a magnificent team, um, but they do really lack suitable replacements when players get injured so yeah they're bolstering up their squad and I uh, expect that to continue next we've got a linked player and that is Balassi linked to West Ham and um, West Ham seem to be trying their best to sign players that probably are a bit above their level as in now because of the new stadium and the money in the Premier League obviously they're trying and you've got to respect them trying uh, Balassi though seems to be one that, that's definitely feasible. I mean, Pardew at Palace is probably not going to want to sell him, and it'll take an astronomical figure for him to go, especially with some of the bids being thrown around for various players in the Premier League. But it's one I could see happening. I think it would be a good signing for West Ham, another winger, um, and with a bit better calibre of players that uh, West Ham have compared to Crystal Palace, I reckon Balassi could flourish. So, yeah, I think that would be a good deal all round. Pella is the next player who's linked. He's linked to Chelsea. Of course, he was Conte's main striker for Italy. But um, would it work at Chelsea? He's done quite well at Southampton. He's done well for Italy under Conte. But, yeah, especially if Diego Costa goes, they've obviously got Bacuay. But Pella, you would think if he did move, he would be Conte's number one option or number two behind Bacuay, whichever way he plays it. But, um yeah, I'm not. I'm not too sure. I mean, they're linked to other strikers like Higuain. Obviously, they are the desirable world-class strikers that everyone wants. That very rarely come off in a transfer window. So Pelé seems a lot more realistic. He's a Conte player. I mean, we've seen him for Italy, so he could do a job. But you know, I think a lot of Chelsea fans are obviously hoping they sign someone of the caliber of Higuain rather than Pelé. But it's early stages. Other clubs like Milan are interested in uh, Graziano Pella, so we'll wait and see. I think if a bid did come in from Chelsea, though, it, they haven't officially made a bid yet. It's just rumoured that they will buy Domazio. They're interested. That's all he said so far. They haven't made an official bid. But if they do, you would imagine they would be his first choice purely because of Conte. So, yeah, we'll see how this develops. Next, we've got Benteke. Obviously, Palace made a 25 million bid. Liverpool have rejected it. Now they've came back, and it's reported that it's a 27 million pound bid that could rise to 31.5 million because of add-ons. Palace are desperate to get a striker, and uh, yeah, Liverpool will push for as much as they can, like they did with Sterling to Manchester City. They know how much uh, clubs want a certain player, so they know how much they're prepared to bid. And as soon as they reach whatever their desired target is, 
Benteke will be free to move to Crystal Palace. So whether it's this bid, whether it's an even higher bid, we'll have to wait and see. I mean, 30 million in today's market for Benteke, considering the season he had last season, that that's exceptional, especially from a, a team who finished in the bottom half of the table last season. So, yeah, I think it'd be a brilliant signing for Crystal Palace, though. But, uh, yeah, it's just it's crazy what Premier League money's doing for uh, the whole Premier League, not just the top, top clubs. Anyway, next we've got Koulibaly linked to a 30, uh, 30 million pound move to Chelsea. He's been heavily linked for a good while, but it seems as though this one will finally come to fruition whenever France go out the Euros. I think Koulibaly has made his choice, and I reckon it is Chelsea. 30 million pounds is what Napoli were apparently holding, over, uh, holding out for, and Chelsea are reportedly set to meet that. There was opposition from the likes of Arsenal, but I reckon Koulibaly will go to uh, Chelsea again with Conte a lot of Serie A players no Conte respect him and yeah I, I generally think this would be a great signing Koulibaly Zuma Chelsea will have some decent young centre-backs um, to well eventually obviously replace Terry because I reckon he'll uh, retire after this season but yeah a solid signing if it happens which I expect it will next we've got another player well of course we've got another player Ruben Neves linked to a £13 million move to either Manchester United or Liverpool. I doubt it'll be Manchester United. He's probably linked there purely, you know, so Liverpool hurry up. His agents linking him to Manchester United. Oh, he's Portuguese. Oh, Mourinho wants him. Not saying he's a bad player, but I, especially if we're actually going full force for Pogba and there's other links of a player I'll get to later in this episode, but... I reckon this this is the sort of deal that suits Liverpool. I think it would be a brilliant signing. Um, I think he broke into Porto's team at the age of 17. He's been playing there for two, three years now. He's been linked to a whole host of clubs in the past. But 13 million for Ruben Neves, I think, would be a fantastic piece of business. And I would be very interested to see what he could do. And yeah, I reckon Liverpool's the likely destination if their bid for Dawood fails or they, they just prefer Ruben Neves because he's cheaper. We'll have to wait and see. But yeah, he's he's linked, and uh, this one will develop in the coming weeks. Next, we've got another player who I probably should have mentioned in last episode, and that is Icardi. £38 million bid, supposedly, by Spurs. They're willing to pay that. And uh, this is because Janssen, uh, the uh, Elkmar, basically rejected their bid, and uh, Janssen got very annoyed with that. But... It seems as though Spurs may be focusing their attention on a Cardi instead. That would be a fantastic signing. It really would. Very young player, striker for Inter. And I reckon when partnered with Harry Kane, Harry Kane for Spurs is exceptional. For England, not so much. But that's probably because of the system and Roy Hodgson. So yeah, if he was partnered alongside Harry Kane or even just there for competition, Spurs would have unreal squad depth now like that that would be sensational and if it did happen then Spurs would definitely be genuine title contenders for a second season in a row well until the last game when they bottled it last season but you know with with more depth I reckon they, they could push for a potential title alongside the whole host of other clubs next season's very unpredictable but Icardi would be exceptional for Spurs and the last player I've got, well, actually, you know what? I'll go through another one that I should have said yesterday, and that was Steve Mandanda moving to Crystal Palace on a free. Now, that is exceptional by Crystal Palace. Mandanda's been linked to a whole host of clubs in the past. He didn't move, and then he's let his contract run out, and Palace have managed to sign him. Now, that is a top-quality goalkeeper, and... Um, yeah, they're really making moves. They definitely want to finish at least in the top 10 next season. And uh, they're doing the signings. They're prepared to pay the money. Obviously not for Mandanda. Well, I suppose wages, but he's free. But yeah, they're prepared to do whatever they can. And uh, yeah, it's got to be respected, to be honest, in the Premier League. But yeah, that's a fantastic signing, in my opinion. And the final player we've got linked is Blaise Matuidi. Now, I can't remember which French outlet it was that jumped the gun and said that he was on his way to England for a medical and all this bullshit. Lequip basically said that was bullshit and uh, he left the French camp to, to go for dinner somewhere. Like, uh, how, how can people get that mixed up? Like, what the hell? But um, it does look increasingly more likely that Matuidi could be allowed to leave PSG and he might want to because of saint Krakowiak who will probably play in his favoured position. He's always he's always in the past um, admitted his desire to play in the Premier League 
And uh, he's linked to Manchester United, he's linked to Chelsea, he's probably linked to a whole host of other clubs, but they are the main two. And um, I reckon if, if we cannot get Paul Pogba, then I'm sure we'll go after Matuidi. And his agent is Mino Riola, the same as Ibrahimovic, Mkhitaryan and Pogba. So yeah, I reckon if Pogba, if we did go for Matuidi, it would mean obviously Pogba isn't coming. But if, if Pogba does, then I reckon he'll go to Chelsea if Matuidi does leave. That's my thoughts on the matter and either or would be fantastic signings for us and Matuidi would be a fantastic signing for Chelsea as well. So uh, be interesting to see them in the Premier League but hopefully you have enjoyed. Subscribe if you haven't already. Like the video. Leave me your thoughts in the comment section and yeah, peace.